In the last video, we talked about how you can eat foods that can boost your energy and can make you uh, feel less tired and stressed. But of course, eating is only part of what we do to stay alive, to get all the nutrients that we need and so on. And so one might say that in addition to being what you eat, you're also what you drink. And we're going to talk about that in this video. Now, it's very important that you keep your liquid levels up to avoid dehydration. And dehydration can be extremely energy sapping because what your body does is it concentrates everything around your vital organs to keep you alive and it doesn't leave a lot of energy left over to do anything else. So you want to aim to drink between two and a half to three litres of liquid, preferably water, every day. The exact amount is going to vary depending on your body size and men tend to need more liquid than women do. But you know, two and a half to three litres is an average amount that most adults need to uh, keep themselves properly hydrated during the day. Now, as a bit of a sidetrack, here's uh, some facts about your body and water. Up to 60% of the adult human body is water. And it's not just your blood, your brain is mostly water, your lungs are mostly water, things like your liver, that's mostly water as well. Your skin has a high water content as well. And water regulates our internal body temperature by sweating and respiration. And the carbohydrates and proteins that our bodies use as food, in other words, to create energy, are metabolized and transported by water in the bloodstream. So having enough water is very important. And it's best to drink water rather than other drinks because water can be more readily absorbed by your body. But of course, drinking just water can be a bit boring. After all, you know, water doesn't have any taste to it. So there are some other things that you can drink. First of all, you should drink tea because tea reduces the levels of stress hormones in your body. I know this is you know, very easy for an Englishman to say that you should drink plenty of tea, but tea is actually better for you than coffee and some other drinks. And don't just take my word for it. A study by University College London back in 2010 found that daily cups of tea can help you recover more quickly from the stresses of everyday life. And you can read all about it on their website, which is www.ucl.ac.uk forward slash media forward slash library forward slash tea. The other thing that you should drink is fruit juices, uh, particularly things like orange juice and grape juice and that sort of thing, because they increase the vitamin C in your body. And vitamin C, of course, is a key nutrient uh, which helps build energy. You can drink coffee in moderation. Um, I'm not going to lie to you, coffee can boost alertness. The caffeine that's in coffee uh, can really give you a kick. But you want to drink it earlier in the day to avoid insomnia. So, you know, when you're out for dinner, avoid that double espresso. Otherwise, you're probably going to have trouble getting to sleep at night. You can drink alcohol in moderation. But it's best to drink wine rather than beer. Now, wine is actually better for you than drinking beer because it contains antioxidants which have been shown to benefit the brain. And a study in 2013 by Biomedical Central Medicine found that drinking wine could lower the risk for depression. So wine is actually better for you than drinking beer. Okay, drinks to avoid. Uh, one to avoid is milk. Now, children need the extra vitamin C, but adults don't. Uh, so 
when you're a kid, when you're growing, then yes, you want to get plenty of milk, plenty of vitamin D because that helps to calcify bones. But once you're grown up, you don't really need it. And milk contains lots of fat, fat that your body doesn't really need. And your body will just simply store this for future use and it just builds up over time. And while it's okay to, you know, have some milk on your cornflakes or uh, have some milk in your coffee or some cream in your coffee, you don't want to drink a glass of milk a day or something like that because you really do not need uh, the fat. And lactose intolerance can also sap your energy. And many people have a lactose intolerance, but they don't realize that they do. So if you find after you've had a milky drink that you're starting to uh, get something like a runny nose or itchy eyes or things like that, it could be that you have a lactose allergy or some sort of lactose intolerance and it can make you tired. So you really want to give milk a miss as a drink on its own. Something else to give a miss to are soft drinks. Soft drinks have little or no nutritional value and they're full of caffeine, cornstarch and processed sugar. So while they can perhaps give you a bit of a sugar boost, uh, they might give you a bit of a caffeine kick. As I was saying earlier on about coffee, it doesn't really have any long-term value. In fact, it's actually better to drink sparkling water than it is to drink soft drinks. And if you think about it, you know, most soft drinks are drunk really cold. And the cold kills all the flavor. So all you're tasting is the fizz from the uh, carbon and uh, the sugar. So really, if you get some carbonated water and put it in the refrigerator and drink it cold, you're not going to notice a great deal of difference between that and a soft drink. And there, there are lots of different types of uh, carbonated water out there. Some have a rather sodary aftertaste. Others just simply taste of water. But, you know, try a few and see which one works best or see which one you like best. And you'll find that it's much better for you than loading up on uh, some of these soft drinks. One thing you should always, always avoid, in my opinion, are energy drinks or so-called energy drinks, as I call them. Now, Energy drinks do give you a short-term energy boost. You know, what they say, the claims the manufacturers make about giving you a short-term energy boost is true. But they have very high levels of caffeine. You know, it's just like drinking a double espresso coffee, some of these so-called energy drinks. Uh, so you have a lot of caffeine. And they also have very high levels of sugar. And this isn't good sugar, it's processed sugar and it's glucose. And these are not sugars that you really need in any high level or quite frankly in any concentration whatsoever. These do bring about possible metabolic issues uh, such as the production of stress hormones. And when mixed with alcohol, they do mask your level of impairment. So you might not feel that you're drunk. You might feel that you're fine. You can get in your car and drive it, even though you're over the drink drive limit, that sort of thing. So they are generally to be avoided whenever possible. And of course, drinking isn't just about consumption. Having a drink with friends in a social setting can be beneficial as it boosts your self-esteem and therefore boosts your energy. And chatting with co-workers at the water cooler serves a similar function and it can break up the monotony of a working day. So going out for a drink with friends, uh, it, it's all part of a social thing. It's all part of connecting with your co-workers and that sort of thing. So uh, as I said, drinking isn't just about consumption. And in addition to drinking water... You can actually splash some on your face when you're feeling tired and it'll help to revive yourself. Now, 
I'm not saying that you should go to the sort of lengths that this lady is doing. Uh, you don't want to take the ice bucket challenge every day. But, you know, just going to your bathroom and splashing some cold water on your face when you're starting to feel tired, it can help to revive you. And it can have the sort of effect that it does of, uh, you know, if you take a shower or something like that.